Well, hello and welcome. The big news that we are tracking right now, jail sentences of the three cricketers that were involved in spot fixing have been announced in London. Salman Butt has been given a jail term of two years, six months. It's one year for Mohammad Asif and six months for Mohammad Amir. Apart from that, they've been asked to pay compensation to close to 30,000 pounds is what Salman Butt will have to pay and close to 10,000 pounds is what Mohammad Amir and Mohammad Asif will have to pay. We've been also told that Mohammad Amir his lawyer, in fact, said in court that they would like to appeal this in a higher court as well. Joining us on the phone line is former Pakistani captain Ramiz Raja. Thanks so much for talking to us. What I want to ask you is the quantum of punishment. Do you think it's enough to deter future cricketers from not doing it? Because we've been talking to a lot of experts and they believe that this has been a bit lenient. I don't think so. I think uh, jail punishment is a harsh punishment. Um, I think the the bans were just a little bit lenient. I think um, you know they could have been um, taken to the cleaners in that area, but when it comes to uh, spending time behind bars, you know it can be tough. Even two and a half years um, can seem very long. Right, and something we sometimes forget, it's not just the jail term, that the social stigma that is attached to it. I'm sure most of these cricketers have family staying in Pakistan and, and they probably will face a lot of problem now. But the question that I want to ask you is, let's look at Mohammad Amir now. Uh, he's been, you know, there's been a lenient sentence towards him because many believe, first of all, he pleaded guilty and that he's a young cricketer, comes from a very small town. But do you think that's still good enough to grant him leniency simply because he's a bowler? who can bowl in test match cricket. He may be 18, 19, but he can plot a dismissal of a batsman, take 10 wickets in a test match. Well, I, I've got no soft corner for Mohammed Amir. You know, he may be young and exciting and, uh, you know, great future asset uh, for world cricket in Pakistan. But, you know, once you prove that you are a corrupt, corrupt article, I've got no sympathy for such individuals because, you know, you, you, you are selling yourself to the devil while others are trying to uh, fight it out uh, and win a game. Uh, and, and, and you have, you have started with the, with the wrong side. Uh, he was quietly given an opportunity by the ICC to come out clean before the Qatar hearing. He did not. So I, I guess you know, there can't be any sympathy um, for Mohammed Amir. You know? He may be young, but he had to be smart. I mean, look at all these tennis players. They start very young. But they've got good people around them, you know, who can uh, tell them what is right and what is wrong. They manage their, uh, their skills uh, well. And I, I think uh, Mohammed Ahmed didn't have good people around him to suggest and advise him properly. Uh, final question, uh, uh, Mr. Ramiz Aja. I know Mohammed Amir, on the subject of Mohammed Amir, he's been given a six-month ban and a five-year ban, of course, by ICC. But he's still young. He may be able to make a comeback to the uh, international arena. But the question is, should he be allowed to make a comeback? Well, if I have uh, anything to do with the cricket board, um, I will uh, not have him playing cricket ever again. Because, you see, it's a credibility factor. Once you're corrupt, people will assume that... Uh, you can uh, you can be lured into into such distractions again, uh, and and you know um, and it'll be a burden for Pakistan cricket also. I mean you know uh, he will have to prove a point over and over again, which can be tough for him. It it will definitely be tough for the for the cricket team, a and the world cricket um, will not be a happier place. Also, I mean you tell me if you got somebody who has been punished uh, and put behind bars, and to have him playing uh, again. I will not feel comfortable at all, um, you know, uh, and, and distractions will continue. I mean, the spot fixing saga uh, will not die off uh, completely. I mean, you can never trust the cricketers anymore. Uh, and unless you have strong management, strong administration, uh, running cricket uh, at the board level and at the top level, I think you'll, uh, you'll have um, such a story developing maybe five years, ten years down the line. Who knows? So uh, I will not be picking right. him, certainly. Right, thanks so much for joining us, Rami Zaya, there and sharing your opinion right here on NDTV. Joining us also on the phone line, uh, Osman Samuyuddin, someone who's followed Pakistan cricket for a very, very long time. Osman, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Rami a short while ago. Mohammad Amir, possibly because he's young, can make a comeback, but should he be allowed to make a comeback? Oh, you know, it's a tough one. I, I, I think deep down, I probably agree with Rami uh, on this. Uh, you know, especially in the context of Pakistan, as Ramiz was pointing out, you know, we've had, in the past, we've had guys who have kind of been guilty but not been totally guilty and they've been allowed to play on and go on to even captain their sides and, you know, hold coaching positions. And it's kind of let the, it's kind of let that stench of corruption linger on in Pakistan for the last decade. So, you know, as, as much as, obviously, you know, we all enjoyed Amir and his bowling, 
uh, I, I think at some point, the, at, with someone, the board has to make this the harshest example that, listen, if you do something like this, there is no way back for you uh, into cricket at all. You know, that, that warning should at least go out. And the other thing is, think of the pressure that is put on Amir himself as he comes back into, if he comes back into cricket, you know. I mean, playing with that kind of taint on you, uh, it, it can't be an easy thing because living with that kind of taint on you is not an easy thing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would probably side, although it's not an easy decision to make, I would probably side with Ramiz and say that, you know, he shouldn't be allowed uh, back into the game, unfortunately, now. Right. Uh, Osman, also, you know, we've been talking about the quantum of punishment uh, with regards to these cricketers, but do we sometimes forget the social stigma that is attached to it, the kind of shame that a cricketer will have to go through, and especially his family uh, in Pakistan? Uh, I mean, you know, what's to, what's to forget? See, they have committed, the very simple point is that you've committed a crime. Uh, in one country, this is con in many countries, this is considered a crime, but you've committed a crime, you've been found out because of it. Uh, and because you've committed it, then you open yourself up to whatever quantum of punishment is deemed necessary and fit by that, you know, by that country's laws. And uh, I, I don't think there can be any argument. So, okay, some people are saying, well, people get away with murder and stuff, but that's not the point. They have committed a crime, they've been caught, they've been they've been sentenced guilty uh, and then it's up to the judge it's a subjective thing he's obviously trying to set some kind of precedent as well you know by by giving them jail time uh, I, I i don't see how people can complain once they've been accused of it then what do you do you just let them off uh it, it it sort of beggars belief that you would you know just let them off with a with a fine for example okay let me talk about pakistan cricket in particular uh I know that it's a subcontinental problem. In fact, it emerged in South Africa and Australia too. But in particular with Pakistan cricket, do you think it is also a mirror image of how the country is being run at the moment? Because most administrators who are running uh, cricket in the country are also politicians. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say the same about corruption necessarily, but I would say, yeah, the, the failure of administration in Pakistan generally is not a problem restricted to cricket. But what is happening in cricket is most definitely linked to what has happened to the country itself over the last you know, 10, 10 years maybe. The decline in cricket administration, the decline in cricket uh, and the structure is definitely due to what's happening in the country. The corruption, uh, you know, I, I'm still very wary of, of assuming that uh, on the basis of what some claims that Mazhar Majid, who's now in jail, has, has made in court, I'm very wary of saying that yes, all of them are corrupt and Asif was fixing with other rackets and the whole team is corrupt. I'm, I'm wary of saying that, you know, because I haven't seen proof of it. Uh, I think it's been long enough that Pakistan... Pakistani players themselves, ex-players, have gone around accusing their own other players of, of something like this without any basis, in fact, or evidence. Uh, and, I, you know, until I see evidence otherwise, I don't think the Pakistani game is corrupt. These three were, obviously. Um, the other names have been mentioned, but you have to bring out, you know, evidence on these things. So, the, as far as corruption goes, yeah, it's there in Pakistani life, obviously, but, uh, you know, whether it uh, has filtered into cricket because of that, I, I, I wouldn't be able to make that judgment right now. Right, final question. I'm going to probe a little further exactly what Mazhar Majid sh uh, said a short while ago, that he was involved with a few more players. For someone who's covered Pakistani cricket, do you think the rot has now been removed or still there could be some hanging around there? Oh, this, you know, again, it's a difficult one. There are obviously some other names in there who people have had, and, and this is not just fans, you know, these are people who have, uh, I, I, people whose judgments we should trust uh, have had some doubts about other players there. Uh, I don't know whether it means that other games have been corrupted. I don't know if it means that other, a whole bunch of other players are corrupted. Uh, certainly, I think what needs to be done now is if there is any kind of evidence emerging from this trial, which I think there now will be, then the ICC, the ACSU, and the PCB have got to get together uh, and, and really clamp down now. They've either got to uh, fall one way. They've got to say that these players are completely not guilty and we're completely fine with them playing. Let's move on. Or they've got to say, yes, we believe there's some issues there. Uh, they need to basically stop it from lingering like it has done since 2000. You know? So if, if there is any evidence in there, which we haven't seen so far, if there is any evidence that uh, authorities are privy to that even sort of, you know, suggest, say, 60% that these guys are involved, then I think they've got to come down hard uh, one way or another. And that's the only way I think we're going to, you know, we're going to stop, uh, for example, you asking this question, you know, that uh, is, is there some corruption possibly in the team still? I think that's the only way we can actually end this debate. Right. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Usman Samiuddin there joining us from Dubai. Thanks for joining us and sharing your views. Also on the phone line, uh, we have with us right now uh, uh, Anirudh Behel, senior journalist. And remember when the match-fixing saga first broke in India, he was instrumental in that. He followed that story for a very, very long time. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, Anirudh. You know,
from the time I'm talking about the early 90s when the match fixing saga broke in India to now. Do you think things still remain the same with most administrators trying to brush these things under the carpet and that's why we have a situation like this at the moment? Uh, the match fixing story didn't break in the early 90s, it broke in 97. And uh, as far as brushing the, we always face this uh, a BCCI which always had an ostrich-like attitude and it was always unwilling, you know, don't listen, don't speak, don't hear. I mean, they always had the attitude that you can't speak ill about the game even though with facts. And uh, they, at that initial stage, they did a big disservice to the game by not really getting to the root of the matter. And uh, subsequently, even spooled otherwise. And uh, I think a lot of the blame should uh, be on them that they didn't clamp down initially. And I think now with the surfeit of 2020, I think they have to be extra vigilant. What do you think needs to be done? Because we will have these kind of bans. We had it at that time as well. We've, we've had players being banned now. Now, of course, the new thing is that they've got jail terms as well. But do you think this is still will act as a deterrent and this can really be removed out of cricket? You see, in, in the Indian context, uh, there is no criminal deterrent. You still, the laws weren't amended. You still have that old 420 in, under which they can be, and some vague thing about uh, if a match fixing happens and is proved, then uh, that the spectators were cheated. So it's in, in, in a roundabout way that you can prosecute the players, but never directly, which was the sort of problem when the CBI was doing its preliminary inquiry in 2000. And I think that problem sort of exists even now, it has persisted, they haven't amended those laws. The prosecution that you're seeing in England right now is the result of the amendment that they did in their act in 2005, which is what has led to this uh, situation where uh, you have uh, legal tools to sort of get to the bottom of it and, and hold people responsible for their acts. So that act, I mean, the first starting point has to be the uh, amendment of the act. Right, thanks so much for joining us there. Anurudh Behel was joining us. Uh, remember uh, when the match fixing first broke in 1997, he was uh, the one who broke that story. Uh, thanks so much for talking to us uh, right here on NDTV 24-7. The big story that we are following, the jail terms uh, that have been announced for three Pakistani cricketers that were involved in spot fixing. Let me just quickly wrap it up for you. Two years, six months is what Salman Butt has got. One year for uh, fast bowler Mohammad Asif and six months for Mohammad Amir. Apart from that, they've also been asked to pay very heavy fines, uh, roughly around 30,000 pounds is what Salman Butt will have to pay. Close to 10,000 pounds is what Mohammad Amir and Mohammad Asif will have to pay. Six months for Amir simply because he had pleaded guilty in the court of law.